Dave, the Wall Street Journal must not know about your writing schedule here. No, they they do it on Friday mornings, but um, that's fine. I mean, it actually gives me a whole week to, uh, you know, talk to more people about this, and I've been doing that most of the day. So um, nothing really, uh, nothing really appreciable. Um, you know, Vince is a TV. TV's usual. Everyone's no selling it. Um, but the story, it's pretty bad. I mean, when you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, what the, the, the paying off one woman, $7.5 million. I mean, the 3 million I thought was crazy. 7.5 million is a lot of money. And the claims were very bad, uh, leading to that payoff. And that's, that's a big payoff. Um, you know, as far as what's going to happen, I mean, it'll just be interesting uh, to see. But that's a tough one. It's a tough one for the board. I really, I mean, there's no way that that Connor Shell resignation didn't have to do with this. The okay, time, yeah. I, I was actually going to ask you about that because the, I, I think he, what was his excuse that he just had other stuff that he needed to focus on? Yeah, but I mean, I read that. I mean, and I knew, you know, when I heard it yesterday. It's like I knew the story was already coming out, so I already tied it together. So it's it's either, you know, I mean, they say he had no disagreement or anything like that. But, you know, um, obviously, you know, he didn't want to get his reputation dirty by being involved with the company unless the company would act. And I'm sure the company's not looking at acting. Um, they're afraid of the, you know, they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't because they're afraid of the collapse of the stock if, if Vince goes. But if Vince doesn't go, um, you know, it, it could lead to a lot of other problems or it could lead to nothing. But it's 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 hard for me to see that he really should be a, be allowed to function, let alone function in the role that he's been in. And, you know, it calls into question so many things and every push of every woman starts, you know, you start having to ask questions, especially the ones that weren't really over. You know, it's like it's one thing like, OK, Becky Lynch is really over. She's pushed. You know, it makes sense, all the sense in the world, right? But then there's, you know, other women that where it makes no sense. And then what, what conclusion you go to? And I mean, the casting couch thing has been talked about for 30 years. You know, it's not like any of this is new, but I think it's just the fact that it's, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it wasn't new to the insiders in, in Hollywood either, you know, but um, this, you know, it's, it's so public and it's a different era and, um, you know, look, when this thing started, um, whatever it was during the pandemic, you know, I kept thinking, you know, when, you know, when are they going to bring up Vince? You know, it's like they're bringing up all these independent guys, you know, that nobody even knows and nobody brings up Vince. I'm the only one going like, you know, look at Vince's history, you know, it's, and, and I didn't even know some of this. I mean, um, I knew some of it, but I didn't know all of it. And, uh, you know, so it's just interesting to see. And it's also interesting to me. You know, that the people who were so gung ho over nobodies or, you know, I haven't seen them so gung ho over this one um, for whatever reason. OK, let, let, we'll, go, we'll go backwards a little bit just uh, in case people haven't read the uh, Wall Street Journal piece. But the, the Connor Shell thing. So for people who don't know, Dave wrote this in The Observer that he left the board of directors. Connor Shell. I know Connor Shell from when he was working for ESPN he and Bill Simmons and possibly others were the folks who created the 30 for 30 documentary series. Connor Shell did a lot of other things at ESPN, but I think that's the thing that he's probably most well known for. And he has since moved on and created his own company and all that stuff. So that that's the the Connor Shell thing in case people didn't know who he was. Yeah, on he, was the, on the, he, was, he was on the board of directors. You know, and Bill Simmons becomes an interesting one because now you have guys that that was that's I was going to ask you about that. You have all these people, not you know, Bill Simmons from, you know, between Bill Simmons and Fox and NBCU and, and everyone that they do business with. And, you know, it's like um, at some point, I mean, like, again, especially, you know, there's there's so many different things. A&E. I mean, it's like um, at what point do they um, want to do business with a company with this guy running the company, even though, you know, in theory, he's not running the company. He's only head of creative, but you know, I mean, he's he's on the board of directors and he's um, you know running creative, and 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 that's nothing you know new. And then, like again, I talked to some writers from that era, um, one in particular for a long time today, and you know, they would you know say that like 
you know, sometimes they came in and it was like, you got to start pushing this woman. And like, it's not like told to him that Vince is sleeping with him or anything, but it's just like, you know, you get this directive, you have to push this woman who clearly wasn't ready in the ring, wasn't ready talking wise, wasn't over, you know, and, you know, it, it, you start asking questions and most of those questions l- would later lead to those same answers. And, um, you know, that's, it's, that's, it's been, you know, this has not been anything new. This has not been anything new. And, and then when you have uh, John Laurinaitis, that's a tough situation. I can't imagine him being back. I just can't even imagine that one, but they don't have, they need to replace him because Bruce Pritchard's not the right guy for that position either. Right. All right. Let me. I'll just read the first two sentences from this uh, Wall Street Journal piece, and then I'll summarize some of the other information that that was in there. Uh, basically, the story starts with Vince McMahon, World Wrestling Entertainment Inc.'s longtime leader, agreed to pay more than twelve million over the past sixteen years to suppress allegations of sexual misconduct and infidelity, an amount for larger than previously known. The payouts went to four women, all formally affiliated with WWE, who signed agreements with Mr. McMahon that prohibit them from discussing potential legal claims against or their relationships with the 76-year-old executive, according to people familiar with the deals, as well as documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. So the three, so we know of one of the four, because that was the original Wall Street Journal article that came out weeks ago. The the paralegal who... um... You know, people in the company certainly knew of who she was and that story um, when it was going on because they saw her rise to the top. And the one thing is, is that apparently, you know, they were going to raise her salary from 100000 which was her starting salary. So the other thing that's so interesting is, is in her case, she never applied for a job there. She met Vince at, you know, Vince's place of residence which is the you know the um the trump hotel thing in um in connecticut i think um you know his penthouse so she met him at that hotel where she, where he lives and she apparently lives as well and offered her a job and um was going to increase her salary from 100 to 300 except I guess the idea is his bells would go off with that kind of a raise. So it was only from 100 to 200, which still some bells went off. And then, you know, she's also alleged to have been, you know, moved out of one department to the assistant of John Laurinaitis. And I guess the allegations is that then John Laurinaitis had, you know, an affair with her and she was paid three million to, to keep quiet. And that's just, you know, that was all, you know, very recently. These other cases go back. You know, most of these other cases are like in the mid 2000s, the diva search era. So, um, you know, um, when they brought in all these women from the outside um, that they found in the diva search, you know, models and actresses and bikini contest people and stuff like that, you know, and, uh, you know, th- so so that's kind of, um, you know, that that era is is really the era that most of this comes from. And the seven point five million dollar woman obviously uh, comes from that that's an incredible amount of money to pay off i mean it just it just boggles my mind what she would have on him to get that kind of a payoff all right so it says uh one of them is a is a former wrestler and this story is very similar to the rita chatterton story from years ago where yes. this person was coerced into uh oral sex and and, and then settled in 2018, even though this situation seemed to happen around the mid 2000s and that the. Con- well, yeah, like 2005, 2006, the contract was declined in 2005, according to the piece. Right. It was someone who was there, then was demoted. Um, so you can, you know, I mean, I, I have, you know, I, I've been told two names and it's not. You know, I'm not going to be talking about names because it's not really fair to the women, and no, especially there, when, there. There's a you know, Twitter is not being good today for that stuff for sure. Well, it's not going to be because everyone wants to know the names. Um, but you know, the story is there's a very familiar ring to the story. Um, I will say on that one, but again, it could be. You know, I I know one writer who uh, who told me one name, and my you know the name that I thought was someone completely different, but it doesn't matter. I mean, but they're both. Um, I mean, it is that diva search era people that were, you know, that a lot of them came and went very quickly. Um, they were brought to the main roster because they look good in bikinis and, um, 
you know, um, and then they were gone, you know, so it, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a really ugly situation when you think about it. I mean, like back in those days, it was boys who can, can be, would, would be boys and nobody thought different of it. That's just how it was. But, you know, through today's eyes, it's, it's absolutely horrible. I mean, and it probably was, it kind of was then too, but it was just like, it's wrestling, you know, it's like, everybody's horrible, you know, now, um, you know, they're, you know, they were publicly traded company then, but Vince is very brazen too, you know? So, um, and, uh, Again, like if it was somebody else, I think that they would quit for the good of the company already. But uh, Vince is going to it's going to be an interesting thing. He's going to be like Trump, you know, kicking and screaming and, and uh, you know, all the way. So the second person in uh, in this piece was had some nude photos of Vince. Uh, I guess they were a, a contractor. It's, they, they are labeled a WWE contractor. And this was from a 2008 NDA. And then the third person was a former okay, so the, so, manager. So, oh, okay, so the nude dick pics, right? That does unless he's just like wants to show his glutes or something. He's he might be kind of weird well, like that. Yeah, but okay, so, <laughs> so so unsolicited pictures, right? So that is way too similar to the tanning bed story. That's you what know? I thought of as well. Yeah, it, it really gives that tanning bed story. Um, that, that the, the woman at the tanning bed, you know, uh, a lot of credence um, because now you have the same story twice. Yeah, there's patterns with this stuff. For well, sure. in, all, in all in cases with these predators, um, you know, there's there's patterns. Yes. I mean, and you can see it, especially the ones who think that they'll always get away with everything. You know, they're going to do the same whatever their fetish is. They're going to do the same thing over and over again. So, um you know, so so when you have like again, when it comes to some of these things, when it's one person, you know, you kind of like um, when, when you have a payoff, I think it lends a lot of credence to it. When you have one person's allegation against one word against the other, that's a tough one. This is multiple people and multiple allegations. And um, that's not as tough. That's a lot easier to come to conclusions um, when it's so many you know, people. And honestly, the number 12 million dollars didn't shock me i actually thought the four was a low was i actually expected a lot more women in the 7.5 million obviously that was a st absolute stunner so and then the last one was a former manager in 2006 who had worked for vince for 10 years and was paid a million dollars yeah um yeah all right so um I would imagine now when that first story came out, I think people were like, okay, what else is coming? And, and this is what, this is what else, this is what else. But if you're on the WWE side, you got to imagine like they're going to continue investigating this and that there's probably more stories coming. Right. I think these are all the um, NDAs. Um, I think I, I don't know, but I think these are all the NDAs. Um, and I think the other stories are just women who didn't get money and just, you know, whatever, um, didn't want to fight Vince, always wanted, you know, the chance to come back. The people who went after Vince are the ones who see, you know, and, you know, are, are the ones who didn't want to come back because if you wanted to come back, you don't do this. So that's the carrot that Vince has. Um, uh, in these situations. So these are people who, for whatever reason, you know, uh, did the, you know, like, uh, you know, went to him knowing that by doing this, that, that they're never coming back. Now, the last time we had a piece out, he was on television immediately. And then he has since been on television uh, whether it's to announce John Cena or whether it's to, you know, wh whatever he did that first time, you know, the, whatever the saying is that he said. But do you expect him to continue to do that or is he going to lay low? Mm, I don't want to think I think like I mean, my, my gut is that he'll lay low, but um, he he'll, he'll it'll be one of the other. It'll be either one of the extremes. He'll either, you know, um, I think he's going to lay low on this one. I uh, just because this is a little bit it's a little bit too much. Um, people will probably still cheer him probably still helps business in its own weird way. Um, you know, these stories on, on Vince, but you know, I mean, I mean, help helps, you know, you know, 
business as far as like TV ratings for tonight or something, but not helps business as far as business deals go. Um, there's some, there's some business, de- there's like, you know, like that Vince autobiography. I mean, I, I can't even see how you could work with him on that at this point, you know, cause he's going to have to address this and, and, and things like that. The, um, you know, you had mentioned to me that the Netflix thing looks like it's off or something. And yeah, Denise Salcedo tweeted that uh, she had talked to people on the Netflix side and they said that it was not going to happen. I couldn't, you know, that was going to be a real weird one anyway, because it was like, how do you do that story um, without burying yourself? I mean, because because Vince is, is, you know. I mean, he's trying to portray himself as the good guy and Phil Mushnick as the bad guy. And and wrestling fans will go with that. But any thinking individual who knows that story, and believe me, I was in the middle of that story. Phil Mushnick was not the bad guy in any way, shape, or form. Sometimes Phil Mushnick may have gotten um, carried away. Um, but the fact is, the facts were all on his side all the way through. You know, I mean, you you know, it's one of those things where he was just a reporter um, you know, a lot of people talk to and he wrote stories and, you know, Vince was Vince's company was what he was writing stories about. And the fact that, you know, in the trial, they didn't convict Vince McMahon in a trial. The fact is, is that all the allegations as far as like, you know, it was mostly about the steroid use and everything. All the testimony in the trials was consistent that all these guys were on steroids, which is what Phil Mushnick wrote. So, I mean, you know, yeah, you try to make him out to be the bad guy. He's the one telling the truth. So that story was going to be, you know, it was Vince's attempt at vindication and everything um, from people who don't know the story and don't remember what happened 20 years ago. But, you know, so many of us do or 28 years ago. So many of us do and lived it. And um, yeah, that was going to be a real tough one um, to put out because I just think that like the the frame of reference of Vince being the baby face in the story is is was just you know you can't do it you you can't do it with and, and produce it with any conscious you know they were going to produce it themselves but you can't take that story um although they were they you know they made the deal and they were going to do it so evidently you know i mean i kind of lost respect for them in that regard but but i guess it's it's probably going to be off i can't you know and and again like with uh, some of these well a and he's not doing any documentary on vince they're doing it on his talent so it's a completely different thing but uh you know you still you know, um, and it's not the company, but still the company is Vince. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you're trying to separate WWE from Vince McMahon. And there, there, there's it's it's a very difficult separation. I mean, everyone that uh, I mean, it's like not, you know, obviously people who work there aren't bad people, but they all, um, you know, the top people all know this. This is not there's nothing that the top people didn't know that that, that came out. Um, and they made their decisions, you know, based on money, like, you know, other people have in, in all forms of entertainment. I'm not like saying that's wrong, but they did make those decisions and they are not, you know, they cannot go out there and go, we didn't know this. Oh my God, we're shocked. I mean, there's some talent that probably didn't know the details of it, but I can't imagine most of the talent not being aware of, of the, the, the big picture of it, because this is not a secret, this is not secret stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing that I thought about was. The corporate environment there obviously um, is it has to be bad. It has to be. Well, you're um, you're running you're you're running it with the bunch. You know, like like you got to remember that Vince is at his core. Vince is like a sixth grader, and and people who are around him will tell you that. You know, in the sense that you know a lot of this stuff. Like he 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 doesn't not leave hints. You know, he's the sixth grader who's bragging about he's, you know, been with every hot chick. You know what I mean? And that's what he is. And he li- that's what he lives for, you know. And, and, you know, he does all the the bodybuilding stuff. And, you know, that's just what he is. And it's, it's like I, I, I know people like that because we've all been in, in sixth grade or eighth grade or whatever. We all know people like that. Um, the wrestling and money allowed him to uh, continue that life. And one of the things, you know, again, it's so weird to me because um, – for so many of the wrestlers, and not, 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 I'm not saying this this era, but the other era, the territory era, you know, wrestling was the way that you got to stay in high school for 20 more years and, you know, be with high school girls 
you know, um, when you're in your mid thirties, cause you're on television and things like that, that is, that was again, not every pro wrestler in the seventies and eighties was like that, but many, many, many were, you know, I mean, it was, and it was, and the talking and the bragging, it's all the same as that and the drugs and the drinking and everything like that. That's what the lifestyle was. And, um, I mean, it's funny that some people are shocked about that, because, but that's, that's what wrestling was until, you know, it slowly got out of it, but not completely. And, and, you know, still, you know, obviously this, this is in the two thousands, you know, some of the stuff, one story was last year. It's not even too, you know, with, with the, 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 the bear illegal was last year. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess what I was getting to is they have real executives at that company. Now they have a real board of directors. If this scenario happened at, another company that doesn't have a Vince McMahon, like they are trying to clean that thing up like crazy. And I just kind of wondered if, if that was going to be the mentality at WWE, or if you can't really change anything because of who's in charge. Um, you can change, um, but there's still a certain ment you know, you couldn't fully change until you get all the Cowboys out and you can't get all the Cowboys out because they're entrenched at the top. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you did a total house cleaning of all the guys who came from that Carney era, um, yes, you can do it. But then, you know, you're talking about, um, I mean, a lot of guys, you know what I mean? And, 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 uh, and, and a mentality that's, um, you know, that old mentality that, um, you know, that, 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 you know, that's just what wrestling is and everything that's going to be, you know, it's very, very tough to change that, um, because it's been gone on. And I mean, it's not just, you know, it's not just having to do with women. It's, you know, the bullying and all that. And Garrett, you know, you know, you were out to dinner with me once. So we're not going to talk about this, but you were there, you know, that story and, um, you know, full well, and you don't even know the, the whole, the gist of it, although I probably told you most of it, but this was a guy, you know, who was there and, you know, was just harassed, you know, terribly, constantly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's, and it's not a woman or anything, but it's just, you know, the things that they say behind your back and the, you know, the, the nicknames, you know, the nickname, the sixth grade nicknames, you know, yeah. the, the names that I knew from, that I heard in sixth grade that they're given to these people, you know, it's just, like I said, that's why I say sixth grade. I don't even say like high school. Because because a lot of it's sixth grade stuff. But I guess and then the other thing that I thought about is if the culture was consistent with your leader doing things, I imagine a lot of the uh, and, and Johnny Ace is we've already talked about him, but the culture of how men use power in that company it, it you would think that it would trickle down to to others as well and that's kind of the the thing where i was thinking well, like how do you the, clean that up if it's sort of entrenched in 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 the company um i mean you have to clean out, like that's what i'm saying is you would have to clean out the mentality and the mentality is all those guys who come from the carney era and you know then who do you you know i mean you could like i said but i don't see that happening yeah um it's just so but it is i mean it's like yeah you can tell people not to do it but there's but you know look you've got old guys with power and you've got hot young women okay you know around and um you know some of the women are going to be you know not partaking you know and the ones where stars don't have to partake but if you're marginal you know what i mean i mean it's it there's a lot of difference in income between having a roster spot and not having a roster spot if you're not supremely talented and, you know, and, and things like that. And I'm not saying everyone who's marginal does it, but the pressure, mm -hmm. um, it, the pressure is going to be there and they're going to feel it. I mean, no one's going to say it publicly because then you kind of, you know, again, you can never go back at that point when you do, but it's, um, it's got to be there for many of them. I mean, right. you know, even the ones who just say, no, I will not do it. And, and I'm sure that there's many in there who didn't do it, who wouldn't, who wouldn't do it. And you know what I'm saying? Well, you saw Mickey James's tweet, which seemed like, uh, Hey, I got to get out in front of this, you know, to, 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 to say that, I, you know, whatever she said, I forget what her tweet said, but um, you know, she got out in front of, uh, of it. Cause I'm sure she was seeing tweets from people 
about her as well, which makes this whole thing. Well, she, yeah, yeah, because she she came from that era. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.